Welcome everyone to the all important 12th game of the FIDE World Championship match 2024. Today the world champion Ding Liren takes off his jacket right before the game itself. We have the guest who enters to make the first move. Ding is trailing the match by one point and needs to win it in order to level the scores. You can look at Gukesh, the 18 year old challenger extremely focused at the job on hand. It's not going to be easy for Ding to win this. He has had seven draws before this and then a loss. Maurice Ashley signals, let the games begin. And the clock has started. What is Ding Liren's first move going to be? This, dear friends, is the Ambit recap of the day. Ding opens the game with 1c4, the English opening. And this is a very, very interesting choice and Gukesh goes e6. In the previous game, he had gone e5 when Ding had gone c4. So Ding takes a bit of time, close to three minutes and plays pawn to g3. He wants to put the bishop on this long diagonal. d5 played here by Gukesh. Bishop g2, he develops the bishop. And now what is Gukesh going to play next? He brings his knight out to f6. A very solid option. Bishop e7, castles. And I think for this game, Gukesh would be happy with solidity. And just as we talked about solidity, Gukesh goes d4. An ambitious move here. Pushing the pawn. Well, now the position is no longer solid as such. But it's very concrete. The lines are quite sharp here. Because you are... You have spent some time in the opening, pushing the pawn. Now knight comes out to c6. And Ding Liren must strike in the center with e3. He does so. He pushes the pawn and asks uh, Gukesh, what is he going to do? Now one of the moves here is e5. This has been played before, but Gukesh goes for bishop e7. Very few games have been played with this move order. This is not very well known, but this is Gukesh's way of telling Ding that, hey, I'm getting you out of your prep. So here, d3 played. And now, well, you can not you can castle here, which seems like a steady move, but Gukesh decides to take the pawn. And he puts a question to Ding. Do you want to take with the pawn or do you take want to take with the bishop? And here, Ding Liren decides to take it back with the bishop controlling the d4 square and maybe if you castle now then d4 would give white a nice position which is why gukesh pushes his pawn e5 takes into control the d4 square opens his bishop ding develops his knight to c3 you can see the time difference one hour 30 minutes for ding 1 hour 56 minutes for Gukesh. He's still in his preparation. He's blitzing out his moves. This is looking good for him. And Ding Liren has to be careful here about how he proceeds. Rookie 1, a nice little move. Putting pressure on the E pawn. This is actually a position where you need to build it slowly and steadily. It's not going to be something which happens like, um, you know, something concrete. At 6 by Gukesh, which is another small little move, waiting move, you can say a small improving move. And now let's see how Ding goes about his job. He pushes his pawn to a3. He wants to play b4 and gain a lot of space on the queen side. So Gukesh's response a5 seems natural. But remember guys... You have weakened the b5 square and it's a very important square because it controls d4, puts pressure on c7. I love how Ding is playing here. h3, very little moves. He's asking the questions to Gukesh. If you go bishop f5, trying to push here already, queen b3 followed by rook d1 is possible. So Gukesh says, I'm not even going to try and put pressure here. I'm just playing my bishop to e6. And I love this next move by Ding. King h2 again. The thing is, later on, the h3 pawn can be soft. So he just goes up and defends that pawn with his king. And now for Gukesh, maybe rook e8, bishop f8, knight d4. This should be a direct plan. But he decides to spend some time playing rook b8. Not particularly a great move. Also, 
the position demands something more concrete because white is going for this plan which ding is showing queen c2 rook d1 and d4 and the queen is a little bit awkwardly placed on d8 rook e8 played by gukesh he's still playing this very very calmly he's not really worried about his position he's like everything's fine knight jumps to b5 now this knight is keeping pressure here but more importantly not letting any black knight enter the d4 square um and bishop f5 played here by gukesh that's a that's a good move he's putting pressure on the d3 pawn and ding is going to defend it now with his rook quickly coming to d1 so ding leren starts moving quicker it's 16 moves have been made he has 53 minutes left gukesh has 1 hour 1 minute left knight comes back to d7 here uh, he's just bringing his knight back, uh, hoping that his knight can go to c5 and put even more pressure. Maybe better was bishop f8 or queen c8, but now very nice move by ding. Queen d2 aiming for d4 break, and you can see the black pieces all a little clamped down. Bishop g6 played by Gukesh, and I think it's time to break in the center with d4. Fantastic move. And the key point being, if you take here, I don't even take back. I attack here on c7, which is so powerful. So Gukesh had to push his pawn here, which is good. But now knight g1, I love this move because Ding is going knight e2 to f4, putting pressure on this bishop on g6. Knight comes to b6, attacking the pawn on c4. If you go b3, maybe there's a4 trying to destabilize the structure. So queen c3 makes a lot of sense here. And now Gukesh goes bishop f6. Maybe a mistake. f5 could have been better because now bishop f6. Yes, he's putting pressure on d4, stopping the pawn from moving ahead. But Ding can just move his queen away and that is exactly what he does. He goes queen c2. He's keeping an eye here and more importantly, preparing the move d5. a4 played by Gukesh and he's like, if you play d5, I'll jump knight a5, maybe I'll put pressure on c4. Ding has no plans of giving the knights any squares. He goes knight e2. He wants to play knight f4. Bishop g5 played here. He's wanting to trade the bishops. If you take here, edge g, black is back in the game because this important square is lost. Here, Ding Leren has to find the only move to get an advantage, which is knight f4, and he finds it. Fantastic move here. He's putting pressure here, but also c5 becomes a big threat. So take on f4. Bishop takes f4. Now the c7 pawn is hanging. Step by step, Ding has put so much pressure on Gukesh. e pawn is also hanging. If you play e3, I have simple queen e2, which is giving white a great position. So he goes rook c8. And now once again, a classy move here, queen c3. Stopping the knight from coming to e5 when d5 is played. Gukesh had to go super passive now, knight b8. You can actually win material with knight a7 now, which is very, very powerful. Uh, but he goes d5 and Gukesh instantly responds with queen d7. And maybe it's time to push further ahead, d6. Might be a very, very strong move. d6, cd, knight d6. Yes, he pushes his pawn forward into this position. c5 played here by black. If you play c6, there's knight c7 here. Uh, knight to c7 attacking the rook. And rook to f8 played. Bishop took the pawn. Gukesh quickly brings the knight in. Well, somehow he's trying to just survive here. But Ding just quickly brings his bishop back. If you go here, knight d4, I'm simply going to even chop this off and attack this knight here. So he goes rook d8. And now Ding brings the knight back to d5. Gukesh chops it off. C takes d5. Already Gukesh is one pawn down. His knight is attacked. 
this pawn is hanging the d6 pawn is beautifully defended it just feels like there's no compensation here so queen takes c5 he goes rook c8 and now two pawns up for white ding comes back queen d4 just centralizing his queen and well gukesh has to try for some counterplay last final some chances knight goes to a6 and it's time to get your rook to the seventh heaven queen b5 played by gukesh the rook is very well placed here the queen is active d7 played and he goes rook to d rook to c4 he pushes forward and now how is ding going to continue he goes queen e3 somewhere or the other rook e8 ideas are in the air rook c2 for now you can't do rook e8 because you lose this pawn but bishop d6 is such a killer move now rook e8 is threatened f6 played and it's time to finish off the game look at ding he knows he spotted the win he takes on g7 if king g7 there's bishop f8 king f8 and you can make a queen so gukesh resigns ding liren scores the win makes the comeback and he is now on 6 points here he's equalized the score 6 6 is the score here and the arbiters are here to get the score sheet signed the match gets even more exciting than before with two games to go it's all even maybe we are going to go into the tie breaks maybe gukesh tries to press in game 13 but whatever it may be right now you can see gukesh is very very upset here he has missed a big big opportunity um in the match after this game i was clear that ding made no errors today he played a flawless game in fact gukesh had no real chance today and i i wonder what gukesh must be thinking at this point he closes his eyes signs the score sheet puts back the pieces i believe he just said to himself such things happen i need to get back into the groove but ding liren what a champion he is absolute genius to to play such chess under pressure when the entire year before this you haven't been in great form but showing his class when it mattered the most just shows what a champion he is a deserving world champion as the players head over to the press conference of the 12th game waiting outside for ding are his seconds there you see a happy ding comes outside richard rapport clapping for him so is nihua ding's parents are also here they take the bus to the press conference and what a change of emotion today it is everyone smiling and ding liren is happy perhaps the happiest he has been in a few days or you can say even few months it's actually going to be a very very exciting match in the last two games and perhaps even the tie breaks this december the world's top chess minds clash in the heart of new york city at the fida world rapid and blitz championship Witness world number 1 Magnus Carlsen and other stars from across the globe. Rapid and Blitz. Chess in its most thrilling form, unpredictable and unforgettable. Fast moves, tactics and blunders and moments that will keep you on the edge of your seat. Witness the pinnacle of chess excitement. Get your tickets now at worldrapidandblitz.fide.com.